The way the state assists thousands of people with things like welfare and food stamps is going to dramatically change. The Department of Human Services announced Monday that it is closing 31 of its 33 branches and laying off 228 government employees. Now, the cuts will save the state $8 million. And instead of applying for aid face to face with application forms, residents will have to go online or call by phone. Now, the head of the department also says this will mean better service. Clients, the applicants, our customers deserve more than just staggering backlogs. And it's just gotten to the point that we, we really must move forward quickly. It's just a ridiculous thing to do at a time like this when, when people really need the services to go ahead and shut the office. So it doesn't make sense. At a time when you need services, they're willing to lay off 230 employees who do that job. State Human Services officials say aid recipients will get the same level of customer service online and by phone and that it is a more convenient way. But the homeless who use food stamps say they're worried about the new system because they don't have access to computers and telephones. What if you don't have a phone? Now you're homeless? What are you going to do? Use your food stamp money to buy a phone? Like, seriously. That's kind of, I think that's kind of messed up. Being homeless, you don't got no internet, you got no phone, you got no computer, hey, you know what? We screwed again. We always screwed because we were homeless. Some of the homeless we talked to at the state aid office across from Aala Park said they prefer getting face-to-face -face help, but state human services officials say people don't, but, but say many people don't want to apply for benefits in person because of disabilities or a lack of transportation. To hear more from the homeless about the new streamlined system, you can go to the video section of KITV.com. And right now we want to welcome to our newscast, back to our newscast, which says Alex Santiago is the executive director of FOCUSED, which stands for protecting Hawaii's Ohana children, underserved, elderly, and disabled. Mr. Santiago, good to see you again, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. And once again, you're... You, uh, you folks are an advocacy group for people who need all these human services. Uh, services. And uh, what is your take on what the state is doing right now? Well, the first thing I wanted to point out is that young man who was on your show just a little while ago is probably not representative of the people that are being served. Unfortunately, he was there at the time that your cameras was rolling. The people that are need the services are those who many of us never even see. And the point that I wanted to make today is that all this really does and the real outcome of this is to try to prevent people who need the help from getting the services that they need and it's it's almost insulting to hear the department director say that this is actually going to improve excess we've looked at the mathematical report that actually looked at the um, the program in, uh, in Florida that they're trying to, uh, it's called Access, that they're trying to implement here, it took them years to implement that program and it took them a lot of discussion with the uh, private nonprofit agencies in the community who the department is now going to rely upon to pick up the slack that they're going to see as a result of laying off so many people. Um, I've called the people in our agent, uh, the member agencies and none of them have been contacted by the department about what this is going to mean. And so there's, there's this lack of planning. There, there seems to be the department's um, willful in, infliction of more hurt when needs they admit are going up. How exactly is this going to hurt people? Just by not having that office right there, how is that going to impact people? Why can't they go on the internet? Why can't they use the phone? Why can't uh, this system be streamlined? Sure. Obviously, for so many of these people, this is one of the most vulnerable times in their lives. And we're seeing more and more people falling through the, the safety net and finding that they have to ask for help. Many of these individuals really could would greatly benefit from having face-to-face -face contact with someone who I think our department director seems to minimize. A lot of these individuals are going through other type of social service ills that may be coming up. They may be experiencing domestic violence or something. And these intake workers are skilled at being able to see and communicate with them directly and refer them to other services that they may not even be aware is available to them. What's the impact? What's going to happen? Well, what do you think so, are there, is this going to result in what exactly is this going to result in? What are your fears? What's worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is that we will continue to see the safety net continue to be frayed by the very people whose mission it is to provide that safety net. And we're going to see a number of people who need services not get the services that they need. And in the private sector, what they're already anticipating is needs are growing and yet they're also suffering and basically um, doing more with less as they see their funds also being cut. So we're, we're seeing um, this is an extreme example of a systematic 
um, effort on the part of the department to provide less services and it is their mission to provide those services and what's really scary when you really think about it is they're not going to be around to deal with the issues that they're creating right now they're out of here in about six months and yet all of the things that they're doing right now at the legislature and I can go down a list of them concerns me greatly because the new administration coming in is going to have to clean up the mess that they're creating right now and uh, last quick question the program in Florida is it working now actually it is and and they have some glitches and they themselves in the Mathematica report say there were less people b being able to access and they talked about the technology that needed years to be implemented and they talked about the, the partnership with the agencies that picked up it's not a bad thing and we, we've never stated or tried to downgrade what they've done in Florida it's just that the way they're trying to implement it here it took them two years of planning it took them communication and all we've asked is slow things down you're not going to be around to deal with the mess you're about to create. All right, Alex Santiago of the Community Group of Focused. Thank you, sir, for joining us and giving us your perspective. Really appreciate it.